After yesterday's frustrations and another wet night, we had an unpromising morning here, but mercifully, thanks to the ground staff and the weather relenting, we got a start at 2.30. So in this NatWest semi-final, Worcester, of five overs and a bit yesterday, put into bat, had made 20 for no wicket. And here is the third ball of the day. It's bowled by Garth LaRue to Damien Dolivera. A tester there from LaRue just to see if there might be a little bit of pace in the pitch. In the uh, overnight stoppage, a bit more moisture and sweating. And this is a useful bouncer. Dolliver not really getting inside of it. Collinwells it is now. Have to be quick, Dolivera. No need even for the umpire to extend his finger there. It was a question of whether or not the ball hit the stumps. That was uh, very close to suicide from Dolivera. Had Curtis gone through, there was no way in the world he would have got there. This is disaster. There's Curtis there. He's anchored on the front foot. There's no way he can get off and start running. And Dolliver has hurtled halfway down the wicket. And all he has to do is hit the stumps, which he does very, very well indeed. 40 for one after 13.3 overs. David Smith is the new batsman coming in, tall left-hander. Here's Adrian Jones now from the Douglas end. Good player, this fellow. Good aggressive cricketer. Gave that uh, real thump, but there won't be very many fours hit today. There'll be lots of threes. up, Alan Wells the fielder. His 50 runs came from 92 balls. Fine shot this, unusual shot. Half gone forward and then he paddles it round there with a fairly straight bat. And Tim Curtis goes up to 20. And a change of bowler at this end, Dermot Alexander-Reeve. Well bowled. He was really, I think, Jack Corton no man's land, neither forward nor back there. Yes, that's the third time this over he's played and missed. One, there was no movement. The other one, there was low bounce. But we'll see with this one that this one did bounce quite considerably. And it was as much that as movement away which, which beat him. In the air, caught Alicane with no problem at all. That is the second wicket down. So Colin Wells getting deserved reward for his persistent accuracy and nagging length and movement 66 for 2 and Tim Curtis is gone for 22 Tim Curtis will be, be disappointed with this because really it was a, it was a hard wicket shot on just giving a fairly simple catch to mid on and the two Worcestershire big guns together now Graham Hick at which a great deal is uh, expected, and David Smith at the other end. Oh, well played. He had to go a long way to fetch it. And I think it's just enough run on it to make the rope. Well, 
I think a direct hit at almost at either end here. Graham Hick at least was positive about his calling and going, but David Smith wasn't thinking of a run. And uh, Smith, he having hesitated, has gone. I think a direct hit here, and Smith's well out. Well, good player or not, you've got to have a little bit of luck here and there. They've all had it over the years. And that's one that might be regretted by Sussex, Colin Wells, and uh, the man at second slip. Well, how expensive this is going to be. Who knows? And there's a fairly... coming hard, but a perfectly acceptable chance. Colin Wells to continue to David Smith. too impressed he's just reinforced the slip area and uh, suddenly a leg glance for four this is the first over after the T interval Newman Khan's fourth in all and he's played on but before he played on he was deceived by Imran Khan he was coming back to force or perhaps to pull and Imran Khan beat him with speed through the air changed his mind, played it down and onto the stumps. Star player Graham Hick on his way back and a good move by Ian Gould to throw in Imran Khan immediately after the after the break and what a breakthrough he's made and we'll see here that just in no man's land started to come forward then went back and eventually dragged it back onto the stumps. Graham Hick bowled by Imran Khan for one. David Smith is 21 not out. And Phil Neal is the new batsman. Adrian Jones is to come in from the new road end. Colin Wells finished his 12 overs, 12 permitted overs, just before the tee interval. And another wicket. Jones switched to the new road end, and it comes off. Gould has now made two bowling changes. Each one has come off, and Sussex suddenly are looking good. And here we see again Ball, useful one as well, pitching off and hitting off. Always a good delivery to a left-hander from over the wicket. Deepak Patel is the new batsman. Imran Khan. That's close. Yes, I think the other one was going down the leg side, but not that one. That looked as though it was absolutely plum. Skipper Phil Neal goes, and now Worcestershire are in trouble. We'll see Imran Khan again, pitching outside off stump. The ball darting back sharply against someone of Imran's pace, even on a slow pitch. He can't get really far forward too, too frequently. And that's the back of... Skipper Phil Neal. Stephen Rhodes coming to the wicket and what an impact he's made in his short time down here. That's well bowled. Very useful leg cutter. come off the bat he's gone and that's exactly what's happened great catch not everything is stuck in Ian Gould's gloves today but the one that mattered did and now Worcestershire 93 for 6 in awful trouble in this period from the end of the tea interval till now Two for two at T, 95 for six now, four wickets uh, for 13 runs in what, eight overs, and that really sums up the, 
the grip that Sussex have established on this game. She's gone too. That came back inside edge and another catch for Gould. And uh, another crushing blow for the hopes of Worcestershire. Patil is out for six. Seven gone now for 98. So Worcestershire have subsided from 82 for two shortly after tea to 98 for seven. And the new batsman is Neil Radford. Garth LaRue from the far end. And another one, LBW to Garth LaRue, the end of Neil Radford. Eight down, and still the 100 isn't up. Just a defensive stroke here from Neil Radford, but picking the wrong line. Be beaten for pace as well. Imran to Newport. Top edge, clears Gould. LaRue cutting it off down there. And the hundred is up for eight in the forty first over. It's in the air, but it's safe. Just one down to Garth LaRue, deep fine. Imran into Billingworth. Been a bit of a hesitation here. But you have to hurry it. He's gone. Yes. Oh, no. Yes, he's out. Well, there was a lot of toing and froing and hesitation there. And that is uh, nine gone. And Newport is the man out. Run out at the bowler's end. Run out for 11. Leg glance here from Illingworth. Good shot, they take a single, and Illingworth going fast there, looking for two. Superb piece of fielding and pick up, and a terrible mess between Newport and Illingworth, and a direct hit by Gould, who's had a very, very good day today. So Philip Newport run out for 15. 119 for nine. And the last man. Paul Pridgen. Didn't quite carry. Disappointment for LaRue. Rather a tentative little forward push there by Paul Pridgen. Not quite enough pace in this pitch. Here he goes. Just a little push. Angling the bat. Just dropping short of Colin Wells there at slip. And a sixth bowler, Tony Pygott, Sussex and England, to Illingworth. And he's gone, a thin deflection, yet another catch, his third of the innings for Gould. And so Worcester are all out for 125 in the 51st over. The end of Illingworth, who batted really quite sensibly. It's a very, very good little away swinger, just moving away off the pitch. Dealing with pushing forward, just getting a thin outside edge, and Gould collecting a comfortable catch there. Of 51 overs exactly, and the heart of that Worcestershire batting ripped out by a great cricketer with a very fine spell of bowling in helpful conditions. Three wickets going down for two runs when they were 82 for two, and the last eight going down for 43. 
And here's the evidence of the bowling, well handled by Ian Gould. They all did a good job. Imran, splendid figures, three for 26. Adrian Jones had two for 23. So to reach the final, in September against Lancashire, there is the Sussex target, and the scoring rate ought not to be any problem. Not many runs, of course, for the Worcestershire bowlers to bowl at, as it were, but there seemed no reason in these conditions why, if their pace bowlers didn't use it well, they shouldn't have a bit of luck. In fact, luck wasn't the name of the game for Neil Radford, who bowled quite beautifully. He might have had more than the two wickets he eventually got. Beautiful catch there. Graham Hick, is the man, snapping that up. Three slips in, and he was the middle one. Beautiful catch, and Radford deserved that. Deserved Ryan Ali Khan, actually, but in fact, he got Alan Green. Very close, yes. Parker gone, and Radford fully deserving of success there. That's his second wicket, and he's bowled quite beautifully out there for Worcestershire. They haven't many runs to play with. But Paul Parker, OBW to Radford, and now it is 23 for two. So there's the final score. Two down for 31 after 14 overs. Both the wickets falling to Radford. Lovely catch that by Graham Hick. Let's look at Radford's bowling figures, which didn't flatter him in the least. Two for 16 off seven, none for Pridgen, and one over by the spinner Illingworth. So this is how things stand tonight. Sussex needing another 95 runs to win off 46 overs. Time no problem at all, 2.06 per over with eight wickets in hand. Sussex, I think, are in the box seat, but Worcestershire still not without some hope. And the weather forecast is apparently dry overnight and sunny periods tomorrow, when we'll be on duty on two again at 10.25 in the morning. Good night now from Worcester.